Um, so my talk's gonna be different than the previous two talks. I'm gonna talk specifically about software. So for no, no real science, just software. And <clears throat> excuse me, thanks to the organizers for inviting me. So what I'm gonna talk about is, is an extension of the basic model interface for coupling ModFlow to other models. I work for the USGS, my name's Joe Hughes, uh, Chris Langevin, he's also um, with the USGS. And this has been a collaborative effort between us and Del Taurus, Martine Rusher here. Um, so let's get started. All right, maybe you don't know what ModFlow is, so I'll tell you. So um, ModFlow started out, it was originally released in 1988. Well, actually 1984. Um, it's a groundwater model, that's how it started out. So it's got a long history in the USGS. And so um, the latest version is something we call ModFlow 6. We released it in 2017. All of that doesn't really matter. But the one thing that, that we've done in this newest release is trying to rebrand ModFlow because it, it's kind of transitioned over the years. And I'll, I'll have a slide to talk a bit about this um, from really something that is strictly a, a groundwater only model to something we're calling a hydrologic simulator. That groundwater is still a piece, but we also have things like surface water, some way to represent surface water to kind of um, uh, evaluate surface groundwater interactions. Um, and so this, this latest version is, is an object-oriented version. So, you know, over all these years, it started in 1984, and has, there have been releases since then, and this is the sixth one. But um, um, they've all changed somewhat over that, the way they're constructed. Again, whatever the latest, um, you know, kind of maybe not fad, but kind of techniques for programming are available at the time. Like in 84, there wasn't dynamic memory allocation in Fortran came online later. So again, these models of transitions. So it's object oriented because right, everybody likes to do new things with, with software. So that means that we can have multiple versions, multiple models of the same type and also multiple models of the different type. Again, getting to this thing that we're calling it a hydrologic simulator. So what we have in there now is basically we can simulate groundwater flow, but we also have capabilities for simulating flow in channels, lakes, unsaturated zone. And then there's a groundwater transport component as well that can also do transport in those um, channel and lake and unsaturated zones as well. And then we're continuing to develop this. And so this latest version has, has the capabilities of basically a whole host of, 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 of uh, versions of ModFlow in the past. Um, so again, it's basically incorporated all of the kind of the history of ModFlow into this one, um, one version. And then within that is this application programming interface, this API that we've developed that I'll bore you with for the rest of this talk. So here's just some pictures. I don't know why that didn't show up. That's interesting. There's a white, these white spots here. There should be things there that you can't see. Um, so again, we can support these multiple models of, of, of the same or different types. And what that allows us to do is embed these models within each other. Each of these models, these little squares that you see here, could run separately by themselves or they can run together and we can use a variety of different discretization types. So unstructured and structured. And, and, and this is kind of this concept, right? We have these, these halos that we can actually use to exchange data between these models so that we can do these simulations. This would be the release of a contaminant that basically is moving from one grid to another grid. And this is a terrible model. Nobody should do that because you get very big blocky stuff at the end. But again, so, so it's a pretty complicated system that we've put together. And again, but this object-oriented approach uh, that we've developed is, is, it has, lends itself to that, but then also creates some complications that I'll talk about for our implementation of, of the basic model interface. So I'll just talk about a brief history of basically us coupling mod flow to other models. And so it started all the way, at least the earliest one that I know of, is, is something that coupled ModFlow to a, a channel model called Branch in 1996. Since then, we've had something CWAT, which does variable density flow. It's a coupling of ModFlow and MT3D in 2002, and so on and so forth, all the way down to we've, even with the release of this latest version of ModFlow, there are still people that are coupling ModFlow to other things. And so, but a common theme in all of this is what we've, what, what people have been trying to do for the longest time is kind of incorporate the surface water component 
or other model components within ModFlow. And except for this RAS ModFlow, all of them basically, you know, had some kind of, you know, um, custom interface that was developed to build these two models together. And, you know, certain like this mod branch uses like the first version of ModFlow 88. And it became, and, and that's why we, 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 we started to go down the route of implementing the basic model interface is that it was always so hard to basically, if a new version of one model came out, it was always so difficult to actually then incorporate the latest version into some coupled models. So that's why the first and last version of Mod Branch came out in 1996, because it's been so difficult to do that. So within this API, within this latest version of ModFlow, we've incorporated the basic model interface and also something that we've called the extended model interface. And the reason that we've done this is many of those previous codes, what they did for the, they had a tight coupling of the two codes so that within a single time step, you would iterate back and forth within that, that iteration till both of those models or more than one model was converged. And that's something that the basic model interface doesn't, doesn't support. It's basically one model runs, then the next model runs. It's what I would say, kind of a feed forward. And then within this API, there's also some specific functions mostly related to the object-oriented nature of the code. So just kind of graphically, so this is the, the standard basic model interface. We have our initialize, we have our update, and then we have our finalize. Again, it's all straightforward. Uh, this is kind of people that are interested, the mod flow structure, and it's basically any controllers, construct, um, uh, controllers um, approach. So all that we've done with this extended model interface is basically expand the update portion. So this part's just some miscellaneous details, right? Where you get data into the model, right? At a given time step, then you do the time step and then you finalize, right? Where you write output. Because one of the things that we do, right? If we're running this model multiple times within a time step, is we don't wanna write output each time it goes through. And then within this due time step, basically what we've done is expose basically what we call our outer Picard iteration to where we formulate our matrix. And we would do this for multiple models. You formulate your matrix, you know, solve the matrix in some kind of linear system of equations, and then test whether it's converged. And this converged could be based on just this one model or two models, right? There's something that you're exchanging between these two models. Are they in some kind of um, equilibrium at that point. So it's really a pretty minor extension of, of BMI, what we've implemented, but it allows us to do this tight coupling. I won't talk about this for the sake of time. Um, so um, our current state for this API, and I'll show some examples. I won't bore you with just slides. Uh, I'll bore you with some boring examples. Um, so this multi-model and multi-package you know, capabilities makes it a bit complicated with BMI because, you know, the standard BMI calls are basically get value, set value. But since we have two models, let's say if we're talking about hydraulic conductivity, we have two hydraulic conductivities. There isn't a unique hydraulic conductivity for the model. So we had to basically come up with some ways that we can access individual pieces of the data. One of the other things, the current state is, um, we started to try and restrict what people could use, but it seemed inevitably when we restricted what people had access to, someone would contact us and say, um, you know, could you expose this variable? So what we did is basically expose everything, which means there are no guardrails, which means that somebody could modify anything within the code, which is, you know, internal variables. Um, and, and so, um, you know, again, no guardrails, right? And, and the other thing at this particular point, you know, and I think it's generally the case, you, you know, when you're coupling two models, you have to have a good understanding of those models. And, and in our particular case, variable names, right? We're, uh, we're still working on standard names, but, and then also derive variables, something that may be an input variable, but somehow the model calculates internally, but may not calculate except during the initialization phase. So there's some complications along that. So we had a publication in 2022, uh, environmental modeling and, and software, or environmental software and modeling, I sometimes reverse those, um, that talks about this, uh, the application programming interface, the extended 
uh, model interface and our implementation. And within that, that particular paper, um, we had a number of examples. And I'll, I'll talk in, in more detail about this Metaswap mod flow because that, that one's actually used in the XMI. But within that paper, we basically have a simple um, example where somebody just wants to try out a new, what we call a package. So that would be some process that you're representing that interacts with the groundwater system. We also use, uh, similar to what, what we saw um, where we were using SciPy to basically do optimization. I'll talk more about that. Also, PRMS and ModFlow, and James, I'll point the, uh, the laser at him. He'll have a, he's got some, uh, a presentation on that, poster presentation on that. And then also ModSim, ModFlow, which is a river operations model coupled to ModFlow. Um, so let me go into this one. So what's Metaswap? So Metaswap is a, uh, a model developed in the Netherlands. It's a meta model. There's, it's a meta model of swap. So basically what it does is it, it's, it's an emulator of Richard's equation. Uh, it uses the sequence of steady state water content profiles, and it uses a swap code to build a series of tables, right? That basically relates the, the groundwater head infiltration and root uptake to the mean pressure root zone and groundwater recharge. So again, very fast can go through and, and, um, and uh, represent Richard's equation. Um, we can do irrigation with this. And because of our, our, our Deltara's colleagues, it's used, the reason why we did this example is it's used this coupled Metaswap and ModFlow are used in their natural, national hydrologic instrument. Um, and so it's used extensively in the Netherlands. It's tailored to the Netherlands because in most of the Netherlands, the depth of water is less than two meters and actually having a real Richards emulator is important. Um, so these are just, you know, kind of some, some of the code. What we're using in this example is something, these are both things that Deltar has developed. One is this iMod coupler, which is basically similar to PyMT, but it's specific to this uh, Metaswap mod flow coupling, and then something XMI Pi, which is would be similar to Pi MT, uh, except it's our particular flavor that basically implements also the XMI extensions. Um, so this is the update function, and we have within this update function where we're exchanging information from mod flow to Metaswap. We're preparing time steps, and then within this iteration loop. Within this do iteration, we're basically calling multiple times this within this iteration loop. We're calling Metaswap, then we're calling ModFlow. And then when we've got convergence between these two, we're basically finalizing, then writing output. And some of the data that's exchanged, this is the Metaswap to ModFlow um, coupling part of things. We're basically updating the groundwater storage parameters based on uh, Metaswap's understanding of what the storage below the below the water table is. We're also exchanging recharge, basically the water that comes out of the um, unsaturated zone and recharges the groundwater system. And then we're also, if irrigation is turned on, we're basically then setting uh, groundwater pumping rates based on the need for for um, uh, water within the to apply irrigation, and then. When we exchange water or exchange data from mod flow to Metaswap, basically what we're exchanging is the head. That that's the, the, the condition that basically we want to equilibrate, equilibrate to uh, on, on both, in both of those codes. And so this particular example for Metaswap, we're, it's, you know, again, I'm a software developer. I do little tiny, tiny models. So this is a nine by nine by three. So it's, nine rows by nine columns by three layers. You know, it's, it's, it's a nice uh, picture of the world. We've got an agricultural land use, uh, potatoes, and irrigation is enabled. So this would be like, you know, one of these polder systems in, in, in the Netherlands where we've got canals on both sides. Here we've got an irrigation well, and again, here's our, our farm field and we're gonna have an observation point. And then this is a cross section here. Again, three layers, you know, the upper layer is, is the one where the water table is fluctuating. And then this lower layer is a deeper layer that we can pull water out of. Um, let's see, I said all of that. And what we're gonna do is represent relatively dry conditions in 2018. Uh, 
So here's some of the results. Um, some of the interesting things, I guess, here. So since we do have a full Richards equation, this little, and again, you can't see the line. That's it's funny how things disappear. Um, where we're actually pulling water out of the groundwater system up into the unsaturated zone. So, you know, that's one of the capabilities that we have. Um, and so, and then we're also applying irrigation at this time, running short on time. So here's just a, a picture of the groundwater system where we've got, you can see a little dot popping around here. That's the rainfall that's shown there. And again, so we've got recharge conditions. When we get to this point, we'll see that the pumping well will start pulling water into the pumping well. So these are just basically portions of the upper two layers. We're not seeing that deep layer in there. So again, it's a tightly coupled solution and I'm running out of time. And so in conclusion with this uh, API that we've developed, users can create these custom packages without making changes to the under, underlying code, which was not the case, which is the one thing, it's not the only thing, but it is a great thing about the basic model interface. And then again, because we support both BMI and this extension, we can either do iteratively coupled or tightly coupled simulations. And then for us as software developers, this provides us with a sustainable way to design and maintain these softwares and then couple uh, these codes that we've done so far and future codes as well. So with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you, Joe, that was awesome. Um, we have time for one question. See, software is not sexy. <laughs> Everyone wants their break. Hey, thank you. Um, I'm wondering when you talk about the tight coupling, for instance, if you couple the groundwater model with the hydrological surface water model. So do they have any information change, for example, like infiltration? For a surface water model, I mean, yeah. one thing that could be exchanged would be the surface water head so that you could do bi-directional flow of water between the groundwater and the surface water. Yeah, so my understanding is that the surface water model will kind of like uh, recharge the groundwater and the groundwater, the exfiltration will go to the surface water as well. So the two models can influence each other. So when you tightly couple it, so, how often, like, do you specify the frequency they they like interchange each other? The information interchange. Well, so if we were doing the tight coupling, yeah, and that would be within the time step. So as many times as it, as it took to get convergence, right? Mm -hmm. You would solve, you know, the surface water model, right? And it would come up based with what the groundwater heads were. It would come up with basically some exchange of water that went between. Then you would solve the groundwater model again with the updated surface water levels. And then you would do those until the surface water levels and the groundwater levels were no longer changing or the flux, whatever that was, you know, and then when, when those were no longer changing, you would say that the time step is complete. And then I can move to the next time step. Got it. Thanks. 